Good morning and welcome. I'm Dr. A, pastor of the Transformation Fellowship Christian Church, and I am here to welcome you to the experience that we call worship. Before our call to worship this morning, I want you to do two things. First, I want you to hit like, hit share, and start a watch party. That's right. I want you to hit like, hit share, and start a watch party. Invite someone else to experience the love of God through worship today. Number two, I want you to prepare your hearts and your minds for the worship experience. This means getting rid of all distractions, putting yourself in a place of worship, consecrating your mind that we might approach the Lord, that he may come and be with us. This is a great day to be alive. I don't know about you, but there's so much going on in the world that I am excited to spend some intentional time in worship. I know we're scattered all over the place. I know we're not in the same building, but we are in the same body. People of God, welcome. Let us worship. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up ye everlasting doors that the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Let us pray. God, we welcome you into this place, not only, O God, into our homes, into the buildings where we dwell, not only into our kitchens and our bedrooms and our dens and living rooms, not only, O oh God, in our cars and vans and buses and trains, not only, O oh God, in the midst of everything in the material world in which we live, but today, O oh God, we welcome you into the sanctuary of our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, breathe new life into us. Come, Holy Spirit, we await your presence this Advent season, excited about the great things you're going to do. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us. Transform our hearts to love. Transform our minds to understand. Transform our eyes to see and our ears to hear. For your glory, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. I hope by that by now you have already hit like, you've already hit share, and you've already started your watch party. This is our time to worship.
they just keep saying it's the most wonderful time of the year. Singing it blithely in all the stations, throughout all the airport terminals. Like, like they, they forget that we're all terminal. terminal. Forget that we've got people we love dying of cancer under blinking, twinkly lights. By these radios that just keep spinning all these Christmas tunes. All out of tune to the howl of our pain. Over this year when Boko Haram stole our girls and ISIS wielded its bloody knife at our world and we were Rama, we'd be for our children killed out in the streets. The fight for human rights, the fear of disease, lives are being snuffed and stolen. Typhoons, airstrikes, open fire, our neighborhoods are turning into war zones. Our world, like the very ground beneath us, is trembling with fear and racism and death and hate and us us who are terminal, us in the Walmart aisles, us who are the lowest, who have lost our flock, lost our way, lost our home. We think for our children and the doubters and the raisers and the distancers, the black ones and the white ones and the ones turning ashen gray with a deadening cynicism that the CNN news cycle can't ever reverse. How in the world can a weary world rejoice in our Facebook statuses turn into the worst kind of soapbox of pulpit? There is war abroad and the fight for justice at home. Hashtag bring back our girls. Ebola, ice bucket challenge. Why I stayed, Renisha McBride occupied Hong Kong. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. Yes, all women. Hashtag break the internet. Take down that post. MH370. Hashtag pray for South Korea. MH17. Hashtag I can't breathe. Until, Until our souls need a ceasefire. So listen. Listen. Let the ear hear the advent laments of those who can't breathe for their sadness. The act of hearing destroys all fearing. The discipline of listening is the quickening and the signaling of the repositioning of the great commissioning of the kingdom to love the marginalized. Because this is where the word writes the greatest words. And let the shield of the eardrum be beaten to the cupping edge of a plow. Because if you're defending your point of view, you're always missing the point that could point you towards growth. That the very first Christmas was a political event. And every Christmas since, we were not given a son who tries to have the government be upon his shoulder. We were given a prince of peace and the government shall be upon his shoulder. This savior, whose arrival had no celebrity, no, no red carpet, no, no reality show, no paparazzi, just Mary and Joseph and May your animals and stars to lead wise men to this baby. Don't, Don't ever, ever forget, forget it. Dragon, Dragon slayers can arrive looking like small beginnings. So yeah, set up your nativities with our God in his infancy. Our shepherds and our angels and our wise men chasing stardust. But don't forget that our nativity scenes need a horde of Herod soldiers and Rachel weeping for a lost and wounded and hurting and dying. But don't forget, this isn't a story about sleigh bells jing jing jingling. Christmas is the beginning of the story where death itself gets killed. Merry Christmas in its original language means all oppression is dead. Merry Christmas. Take that hopelessness, take that misery, take that despair, because Merry Christmas is an insurrection and a resurrection. Because at Christmas, this Jesus is not just a baby. He is the radical revolutionary who came to do the saving, who spoke uncomfortable truth to the narrow-minded religious, who turned over tables for justice, who used his voice to speak for children, orphans, widows, who became freedom for the oppressed. Yes, he wanted us to know he so badly that he sacrificed himself so we could realize we are not us versus them. We are us with him. He is Emmanuel who is God with us, saving us from us so we can be rebirthed, revived, remade, reborn. God is with us. God is for us. God, God forgives us, redeems us, accepts us. God enfolds us. God emboldens us. God is with us and God stays with us. Us who want to walk in love and serve like him, fight against injustice and poverty with him. Let's do what we hear the angels singing. Glory in the highest runs down to meet the lowest. Let every heart prepare him room. He comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found. His law is love, his gospel is peace. In excelsis Deo, let us sing for love, for peace, for goodwill for all humanity. Let us extend our hands, lift our voices until our lives shout out loud, Merry Christmas. You can be God's giving, no matter how you try. I learned that when I was a young girl. 
sitting in a small family church, every time we prepare to give, we sang that song. You can't beat God's giving, no matter how you try. For the more you give, the more he gives to you. So keep on giving because it's really true. You can't beat my God's giving, no matter how you try. Well, it's time to give. Let us give today out of a joyful heart, knowing that we could never beat our God's giving. This is Advent season. Four Sundays before Christmas, we are on the third Sunday as we celebrate the coming of our Christ when God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God has given God's best to us. Now, let us prepare our hearts that we might give a portion of what he has given to us, that the work of the church may move forward. Let's pray. God, we thank you. For we know that we can't beat your giving. We can't give enough to compare to what you have already given to us. For Lord, you have made us stewards over your good gifts in the world. So now, God, as you prepare our hearts and our minds, we simply ask, God, that you allow us to live with an open hand and an open heart, knowing that the more we give, the more you will give to us. Bless every hand, every heart, every family, every giver. Bless those, O oh God, who desire to give, but simply do not have it. And bless those, O oh God, who have it to give, but refuse to trust you. In this Advent season, reveal yourself in new ways that we might continue to trust you, knowing that we can't beat your giving, no matter how hard we try. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give, my friends, to the glory of God. time for the word of God. Join me, if you will, in Isaiah 61. Isaiah chapter 61, beginning at the first verse. Hear the word of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me, 
because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting. So they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Then they will rebuild the ancient ruins. They will raise up the former devastations and they will repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery in the burnt offering. And I will faithfully give them their recompense. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Then their offspring will be known among the nations and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them will recognize them because they are the offspring whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul will exalt in my God, for he hath clothed me with garments of salvation. He has wrapped me with a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth, it sprouts. And as a garden causes the things sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Let us pray. God, we bless you and we give you praise for this moment. We ask, Lord, that you would send your Holy Spirit that I might proclaim the good news that your people may rejoice. In Jesus' name, amen. Celebrate the good news. Celebrate the good news. The prophet speaking in Isaiah 61 declares hope and liberation to a people desperate to hear some good news. He proclaims to them the word of God in a season where good news is hard to come by. I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm living in the same time. Good news is hard to come by. Uh, it, we, we hear right now that, that the numbers for COVID-19 are increasing. Uh, good news is hard to come by. Uh, number 45, who's been voted out of office, uh, seems not to realize that, that he is not a dictator and refuses to concede to Joe Biden. <laughs> Good news is hard to come by. Uh, we see in the news that, that there's still issues related to racial tension and violence against those who are oppressed. Good news is hard to come by. Like the people uh, whom the prophet speaks to in the text, we in this moment need a word from God to bring us joy. We need good news. So the prophet speaking in the text, uh, declares to these people who need relief from their oppression that God has not forgotten about them. The people of God by now have experienced uh, all manner of uh, destructive and hurtful experiences. Uh, they've seen war and they've seen famine. Uh, they've seen people whom they love deported into foreign lands. Uh, they've seen and experienced the seizure and the destruction of their property. Uh, they're living now under martial law. Uh, they've seen their temple 
of the place that was the religious and cultural center of their world. Uh, they saw it topple down at the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, they have seen uh, all kinds of things that would bring uh, pain and dismay to their hearts. They've seen families separated by brute force. They've seen the vulnerable exploited and the weak grown under the thumbs of the oppressor. Those who wield political and social and economic power uh, don't use their power in order to lift the people up. Uh, but instead they use them in order to continue the, the process of exploitation and empire building. But in the midst of all of this, uh, the messenger in the text uh, says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me uh, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the people of God. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about uh, the message uh, the message is good news. Uh, the, the, the content of the message is that God uh, has, has a word of hope for everybody who needs that word of hope. Uh, listen to the text. There's good news for the afflicted. Uh, there's good news for the brokenhearted. In God, there is good news for the captive. There's good news for the imprisoned and all who mourn. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Uh, is there anybody out there that you can find yourself in the text? You are afflicted. You need your heart bound because you're brokenhearted. You feel captive and captivated by all manner of sickness, disease, and oppressive systems. You understand what it means to be imprisoned. Perhaps you... Today, you're looking for the oil of gladness uh, rather than the spirit of heaviness. Well, God today says that there is good news. Uh, there's good news for those uh, who are afflicted with disease. There's good news for those uh, who find themselves brokenhearted because of the cares and the heaviness of this world. Do you hear me today? God says there is good news. The prophet in the text reminds us that the message that God sends to God's people in the midst of a difficult season is a word that we can still hear today. Hear me, people of God. God still has good news. Uh, there's good news that COVID-19 uh, as a pandemic has a beginning and an end. I declare y'all there is good news. Uh, there's good news that kingdoms come and kingdoms go. There is a good news. There's good news that presidents come, hallelujah, and presidents go. There is good news. There's good news that economies fall and economies also rise. There is a good news. There's good news that you may be sick, but by the spirit of the living God, you can be well. There is good news. There's good news for those who mourn and that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. There is good news. And there's good news for those who feel lonely and alone that God will walk with you through the valley of the shadow of death and you shall not fear no evil for the Lord God Almighty is with you. There is good news. So in the text, we hear the prophet uh, speaking to the people of God. The good news is that God has not forgotten about them. And I declare today that the Lord has not forgotten about us. I know it may feel like we're weighing down. I know it may feel as if we've been abandoned. I know it may feel as if God doesn't hear your prayers. I know it may feel as if God is not attending to your need. I know it may appear that we will always be where we are. I know it may appear that evil is winning. I know it may appear as if we will never end uh, this d d despotic and demonic uh, ruler who is uh, reigning here in the U.S. I know it may appear that things may not ever get better, but God has not forgotten about us. God had not forgotten about them. And we serve the same God today. 
God has not forgotten about them. And we serve uh, the same God, Jehovah, Jireh, the Lord provider, Jehovah, Shalom, the Lord who is our peace. God, God had not forgotten about Israel. Instead, God reminds us in Isaiah that, that I am the one who is behind all of the history that you experience. God is involved in history and God has not left us to ourselves. The good news, uh, the message that the prophet brings uh, is that God is sending someone that God has sent someone uh, to set them free and to liberate them. Uh, hear me now. The good news for the afflicted is that God has sent someone to preach them the good news. The good news for the brokenhearted is that God has sent someone to bind up their wounds. The good news for the captive is that God has sent someone to proclaim liberty that they might be free. The good news for the imprisoned is that God has sent someone to free them from their imprisonment. The good news for those who mourn is that God will send a comfort. Hallelujah. God, uh, in this message, through this prophet, reminds us that God is not without strength Ah, to change our situation. The, the, the good news, the message is that God is still God, that God is still able, that God has not forgotten about us, and God will intervene. God has sent someone. Uh, the prophet says that I, I am this this anointed one, this, this Messiah whom you have been waiting for. I am the one that God is going to send in order to bring you hope and to set you free. The good news is that God still knows how to free. The good news is that we still serve a liberating God. What is the content of the message? It is still that God knows how to comfort the broken heart. God still knows how to bind up our wounds. God still knows how to restore God's people. Uh, the message is that God still is on our side. But what is the means? What, 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 what does it mean when we hear this message? Uh, the image of the anointed one. This image of the one who says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. This, this image of the one who says God has chosen me and anointed me to preach or to declare this good news. The image of this anointed one in Isaiah is grounded in the divine promise of a Davidic ruler a divine promise that God made centuries ago that, that upon the throne of Israel, a descendant from David shall reign and rule forever over the kingdom of God's people. This anointed one, uh, this one who is longed for to free God's people, this one uh, who is awaited to, to, to topple down their destroyer, topple down their oppressor, this, this anointed one, God says, I'm going to make good on my promise. The image of the anointed one is one who arises uh, out of the prophetic uh, tradition of Israel. And, and it's developed into someone, a Messiah, a savior who would reign over the people of God in righteousness. He would be one who would reign in justice. Uh, he would be the one, they say, whose government, uh, the government shall be upon his shoulders. This is the one whom God will send to bring peace into the world. God says that I have a means. I have a way. I have a way to make my good news concrete in your life. Uh, God says this is not just a word, but this is a living word. This is a person whom I'm going to send to execute my will. Ah, the people of God were awaiting a savior. By now in the history of Israel, they, they have already seen the northern kingdom of Samaria destroyed. 
Uh, by now, ah, uh, the people of God have already seen the southern kingdom of Judah destroyed. Uh, by now, the people of God have seen their temple destroyed. By now, the people of God have seen their loved ones deported. They've seen their lands seized. They've seen their goods destroyed. They've seen their sick die in the street. But God says, I'm sending someone who can change your situation. I declare today that, that this is the same God. Uh, this is the same God who made good on God's promise. This prophetic pronouncement to Israel uh, becomes for us the prophetic uh, material uh, evidence in the life of Jesus Christ. The image of this anointed one, the image of this, this one who declares that I am anointed to declare the good news. Uh, this one, this anointed one, uh, this is the one who would declare uh, to the people of God that, that I am the fulfillment of this promise. Uh, this is the one that God would send uh, to gather God's scattered people. This is the one whom God would send to soothe the pains of hurting people. This is the one whom God would send to execute righteousness and justice in the earth. This is the one who would execute God's divine reversal uh, in the earth so that the last uh, would be first and the first shall be laughed so that those who mourn shall have the comfort and gladness and they shall dance that those who reign oh in in injustice shall come down and be toppled ah so that valleys shall be lifted up and mountains shall be made smooth this is the one about whom john cried in the wilderness make way Ah, the anointed one, he is the means through which the good news will be made concrete. The anointed one, he is the one uh, whom God will use to comfort God's people. He is the one whom God will use to execute righteousness and justice in the earth. He is the one whom God will use to execute judgment upon injustice in the earth. He is the one whom God will use to gather God's scattered people. And it says here in the text, because God will do it because God loves justice that God will do it because God hates robbery, that God hates evil, that God detests those who oppress his people. But God said, what I will do is I will be faithful to my promise to my people. I, I won't forget what I promised to them. I won't forget uh, to be their God. I won't leave them or forsake them. I will show up in their lives. It says then, then at that appointed time, then all other nations shall look at them. Then all of those who counted them out shall look at them and know that I am their God. And I have done this because they will know that God has blessed them. The image here. Is that, is that in the latter days, after, after the, the work of the messenger has been done, after the work uh, of the, the anointed one has been accomplished, that, that people from all nations, Jews and Gentiles, will worship the same God. Do you hear me? Uh, you, you, you forgot to shout that, that after the work of the anointed one, that God would scatter people from all over creation, Jew, uh, and Gentile would worship the same God. Male and female would have worshiped the same God. Black and white worshiping the same God. The work of the anointed one is to gather God's scattered people to reestablish righteousness and judgment in the earth that the Lord would be worshiped. 
Then Zion in the text begins to sing. The people of God, the city of God, Zion, uh, begins to sing, I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. The means is the anointed one. The message is good news. But the meaning is what we must draw today. Uh, what is the meaning of this word for us? What does it mean that, that God uh, has sent a messenger, an anointed one, to preach good news to the brokenhearted, to the oppressed, to those who mourn, to those who are in prison, to those who are captive. What is the meaning we draw uh, today in 2020? What is the meaning uh, that we can receive from this Old Testament text? Isaiah 61 still speaks to the ages, through the ages, to us. We who follow God in Christ, we who trust Christ and we have been grafted into this promise that God spoke to Israel, we now sing with Zion. We will rejoice as the city of God. We now are part of God's family. We are the prophetic evidence uh, of Isaiah 61 that God shall and God has gathered God's people all over the earth. This means that we can now understand uh, that God's word really is true. What does it mean? What the meaning is uh, that we get out of this today? We, we can see that our God is a great God and worthy to be praised. Uh, we can see that God is still invested uh, in the lives of God's people. So we can rejoice as the text says, I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. Today is the day of salvation. I will lift up my hands and praise. Today is the day of salvation. I will lift up my voice with praise. I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. I rejoice greatly. Uh, I rejoice greatly because God has done wonderful and marvelous things. And I'm not talking about the material things that we wear, cars or cash or clothes. I, I'm talking about what God has done in our spirits, that God has comforted those who mourn, that God has bound up the brokenhearted, that God has set free those who have been captive in their spirits, that God has set free those who have been prisoners of addiction and disease, that God has executed righteousness in the earth. But then there is a political edge to what the prophet is saying. We cannot miss it. Uh, there is a political edge. We cannot overly spiritualize what the prophet is speaking here. This is not simply a metaphorical prison. Uh, the, 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 the anointed one is not speaking of a metaphorical captive. He's not speaking of metaphorical mourning. He's talking about the lived experience of those who have suffered uh, under the hands of oppression. And I believe right now, another meaning that we take from this text is that God is concerned about the material existence of our lives. God is concerned that we executed a man in the United States here in North Carolina just a few days ago. God is concerned that more and more people are dying because of COVID. God is concerned that our earth is groaning under our lack of good stewardship. God is concerned that we continue to hate each other. God is concerned that people who are black and brown or different in another way are still being pushed to the edge is God is concerned but here the good news liberation is going to come here the good news captives shall be set free here the good news God will turn things around here the good news there will be joy after morning what does it mean what is the meaning we get out of this text we get that God is concerned about our physical, material, everyday existence. 
Uh, people of God, we can't overly spiritualize this thing. Uh, we can't get so high and holy that we don't understand the real oppression that people are experiencing in the earth. We can't get so high and holy that we levitate above the groaning and the pains of people all around us. We live in the flesh. And as long as we are in flesh, we are called just like this anointed one to free cast we're called just like this anointed one to speak good news, to live good news, to declare good news that people may be free. Here in the text, ah, we like Zion, we who are Zion, we join in and we rejoice. We celebrate the good news of God. Zion says, I will greatly rejoice. Uh, my joy uh, won't be able to be contained. I, I will greatly rejoice. If that means I got to wave my hands, I'll greatly rejoice. If that means I got to lift up my arms, I'll greatly rejoice. If my feet get happy, I'll greatly rejoice. I'll rejoice because God has done great and marvelous things. I'll rejoice because God is a way maker and a life changer. I'll rejoice because God God has been a bridge over troubled waters. I'll rejoice because God in the fullness of time while we were yet sinners sent Jesus who has lived. Jesus who died. Jesus who rose again that we might walk in victory. I will rejoice for the good news of God is that there is a Savior I will rejoice because God is a promise keeping God. I will rejoice no matter what it looks like. I'll rejoice no matter how I feel. I'll rejoice. I'm going to celebrate the good news of God because God is, God is, God is a promise keeping God. And and in Christ, all of his promises are yes and amen. If he promised you peace in Jesus, it is yes, hallelujah, and amen. He promised that he'd never leave us. And in Jesus, it is yes and amen. He promised to take care of us. And in Jesus, it is yes and amen. He he promised to free us and in Jesus it is yes and amen I will greatly rejoice in the Lord today on this third Sunday of Advent on this third Sunday as we meditate on the coming of our Christ as we as we consider this God who spoke ages ago and who made good on God's promise to send us a savior. I celebrate this God who loved us enough to come to us and to set us free. Let's continue to celebrate. As you go throughout your week, I invite you, look around you for reasons to rejoice. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. I wondered this morning, if the Lord has touched your heart in a new way. I wonder this morning whether you're finally beginning to see that there is hope, that there is peace, that there is joy in Christ. Believing in God is a leap of faith, a God we cannot 
see, but whom we trust. A God whom we cannot touch, but who touches us. This is your invitation to relationship. It's an invitation to trust God, this God who has given to us that we might live in joy. If you're out there today, and today is the day that you want to give your heart to the Lord, today is the day that you want to enter into this new creation called the church, founded on the blood of Christ, founded through the coming of this baby into the world, this God who died for us, who rose for us, who ascended for us, who's interceding now for us, and who shall come again for us. If you're ready to believe in, in this God, Jesus, if you're ready now to trust, to make that leap into eternity, I invite you. I want you to send me a private message. There's a button on our Facebook page. I want you to go to that Facebook page and, and hit the button to send a message. And I want you to message me and say, I'm ready to take that leap. For those of you who, who don't mind doing this publicly and, and, and you don't care who sees, I want you to put it in the comments. I'm ready to take that leap, that leap into the arms of Christ. After you do that, you're going to hear from me. I'm going to call you. I'm going to email you. I'm going to contact you. We'll have a conversation to make sure you understand the gravity and the beauty of what you're doing, that you're placing your eternity in the hand of an eternal God who will never fail you, that you're trusting this God for your eternal salvation. Maybe you're already saved. Maybe you already know God. Maybe the love of Christ already reigns in your heart, but you, need a church home. You need a place where you can serve, a place where you can be connected to other believers in a consistent, committed way. If that's you, I invite you today into relationship with Transformation Fellowship Christian Church. Our arms and our hearts are open to receive you, and we look forward to meeting you soon. Well, we have enjoyed another wonderful worship experience together. I hope that this time has been as special to you as it has been to me. Every week, I look forward to the opportunity to share the word of God, uh, to celebrate the love of God, and to bring people together who want to know God. I thank you for joining us. Uh, we look forward to uh, an opportunity to connect with you later on during the week. Please remember this Thursday at 7 p.m., we will be airing, premiering live our Hope for the Holidays Christmas or Holiday Special. So Christmas Cantata, uh, we will be featuring music, song, scripture, prayer, and reflections as a way to celebrate this season of hope, the season of peace, and this season of joy. We'll be airing again 7 p.m. on Thursday, premiering Facebook Live and YouTube. So tune in, invite somebody else. Let them know who we are. We are TFCC, where real people experience real change in the context of real relationship because we believe in the living God. Hey. Until next time, we look forward to seeing you. Until then, be well, be blessed, and be transformed. Bye-bye.